Troubling numbers today for the White House in the latest Washington Post ABC News poll. And a new poll is showing that 58% of Americans support Arizona's new law. Voters were asked their opinion, basically, of Newt Gingrich. These days there seems to be a poll on everything and their results are delivered like gospel. But they're not all as ironclad as they seem. Today on DC Decoder, we present a guide for how to check a poll's reliability. And finally tonight, time to announce who you think won tonight's Republican debate. The winner is Ron Paul with 32 percent, followed by... The first thing to check is whether it's a real poll at all. TV hosts asking their viewers to vote on issues says nothing about what the whole population thinks. Then there's internet polls that do the same thing. Polling memos from biased sources that leave out all the data. And then the infamous push polls, where people are told they're being surveyed, but the actual purpose is to spread a nasty rumor. In any poll, you've got to check the fine print at the bottom called methodology, and it's not as scary as it sounds. Believe it or not, a good poll, if done right, can question just a few hundred people that are diverse enough to represent the whole population you're surveying. But no poll is perfect, and a good poll will tell you what it got wrong. It's called margin of error, also not as scary as it sounds, and probably the most important number to look at for knowing what the poll's results really are. In campaign polling, misinterpreting margin of error often makes it look like a candidate's ahead when they might not be, something the news media does all the time. Take this Reuters headline on a Florida poll. It says Governor Charlie Crist leads three-way Senate race. Just looking at the top-line results, you'd think that headline was completely accurate. But factor in the margin of error, and things get a bit murkier. The four-point margin of error in this case means that Governor Chris might be four points lower and his opponent four points higher, which would put Marco Rubio in the lead. Of course, the reverse might be true. Chris could be four points higher, Rubio four points lower, and this is a real blowout. The most we can really say is Chris might be ahead or he might not be. <laughs> not the stuff of sexy headlines. Finally, it's important to check the wording of questions and the order in which they're asked in a poll. Bias polls will ask a lot of leading questions to elicit a certain response. Here's an example from the recent Arkansas Democratic Senate primary, where a poll for supporters of the liberal challenger asked 15 questions full of buzzwords being used in ads against Senator Blanche Lincoln, and then asks who they're going to vote for. An unbiased poll asks that question first to avoid the danger of provocative leading questions influencing the outcome. Between biased pollsters and careless news coverage, it's buyer beware out there for consuming polls. So how did Decoder do in this guide? Go to congress.org and vote in our online poll. <laughs> Just kidding.